Hey guys, so this is Ro Cameron, and um, this is a technical demo of uh, what you can do with Chat GPT as a developer. Crazy, crazy functionality here. Okay, so in this uh, video, I'm going to go ahead and set up a back end situation and show you some examples of what we can do in the back end. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so let's start with um, a Node Express endpoint. So um, create a Node Express uh, end. Uh, let's say post end points. All right, let's start with the basics and then we'll build the functionality in one step at a time. And you'll see how powerful, how powerful this is. <coughs> All right, pretty basic, pretty basic. I love it. So let's say rename a path of endpoints to login. Let's see if it understood that con if it understood that context. All right, great, great, great. All right, so let's say um, login endpoint accepts a, an email and password as a uh, in a JSON payload. All right, we're just gonna effectively what we're gonna be doing is creating a login uh, endpoint um, from scratch. So we're getting the uh, the email um, email password uh, should be on the the body, right? Let's see if it picks up that it should be in the body. All right, it's using the body. Okay. Great. All right. So let's say um, query a Mongo DB database using the email as an argument. Okay. And it added, added that little note about the uh, body parser. Perfect. So it got the dependencies um, understood. And it gives you a link to the documentation, which is which is wild. Okay, perfect. All right, so it adds the MongoDB uh, dependency and the URL string. Okay, let's see how it's handling it. Great. Does the, the, uh, the test fires up the collections that you need. Okay, boom. All right, great. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, so using the data from Mongo, uh, uh, using the, let's see, password, Field from Mongo compare it to the uh, see. Did we forget about compare to the password from the JSON payload? Okay, it's not showing me the entire thing. Let's 
Let's see if it understands so. Nice, according to users, okay. Great, great, great. Mm -mm. Okay, so it's just doing a password match. Okay. Alright. Alright, so let's see. We want to do more than a password match. Let's see if it understands that. This is the um, requiring decrypt, getting decrypt dependency and using the compare method. Oh. Okay, so it's using crypto. Built in crypto module, okay. Compare, okay, create hash. Hash. Mm. Use bcrypt. Let's see how to use bcrypt instead. This was. This is completely different from the first time I did. This is a little bit different. So this is, um, it was a lot more straightforward the last time I did it. I didn't have to coach it as much. But this is good. I can show you uh, the corrections that it can take. There it is, the compare function. Okay, so I removed crypto. There we go, perfect. Alright, let's try to get get it back to the login endpoint. Cause some for some reason I forgot about the login endpoint. Alright. 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 Let's see if it still remembers about the login endpoint. Let's add as a little if the passwords match, give the user a <coughs> JGPT token with one hour time limit.
Let's see what it does here. Is it gonna import something for JWT? Okay, there we go. All right, so where are we gonna put the JWTs? <coughs> what are we gonna store in the JWT? Let's see what you think of AI. Perfect, that's exactly where we're supposed to continue. Right, now it's JWT. Okay. And then that's the last step. Let's see if it understands this. That's that's really impressive. To store the JWT in a cookie, you would need to use res.cookies method provided by Express. Wow. Perfect uh, explanation. And this is, oh man, there's two more steps here for this example and I'm super excited to show it. It's like crazy. It's, it's genuinely crazy. All right, let's see, it's gonna be in the compare area here. Let's see if it uses the res.cookies method. All right, so token, submit, okay. All right, continue. All right, great. This is excellent. All right, so now let's do. Now use async. It waits so we can get away from callbacks. This is crazy. It's writing code that makes sense. It probably works 100%. And you can do the conversions in between frameworks, you know, coding styles, you name it. And it's adding explanations for everything. All right, there we go. Async. All right, await. Mm. So I'll wait on the Mongo client connection. All right. What else are we awaiting? All right. Any kind of uh, connections to the database to be crypt is await. Makes the code so much uh, tidier. And there we go. That is crazy. How much tidier it is with async await. All right, and the coup de gras is uh, convert to C sharp 
Dotnet. So we built an endpoint that handles database connections, um, uh, hashing passwords, cookies, JWTs, and Express. All right, and now we're going to switch it over to .NET. This is just, this is wild. And there you have it. This seems to be mostly right. Um, .NET stuff, I'm not, I'm not the greatest at .NET. But it seems to be about right. That's amazing. That's, that's truly amazing. That is, that is just so wild. This right here. All the requirements, uh, dependencies, um, code comments, async await, and it all looks like proper async await. Um, this this is this is just truly fantastic. That was amazing. So we started from a very simple uh, post endpoint. We added the JSON payload to the body. All right, we're able to pull those uh, those that data those data points out. Uh, we were able to connect to a MongoDB database with a template set up for the uh, for local host, right? Which probably works just fine if I run the code right now because I do have a MongoDB on my on my Mac right here. Um, we are able to query Mongo with the email. And then get um, get the document. And once we get the document, we can get the password and compare the hash of the password to the to the uh, to the current password, or well, hash the current password and compare the hashes. You know, using the bcrypt.compare me uh, method. Um, and then once we get a positive on that, then we can uh, generate a JWT token using the secret key, uh, which just uses a random secret key string um, that it generated by itself. And then we stored that token in the cookies. Um, and it handles all the errors just fine, added comments. That was, I was crazy. That was very crazy. All right, so that's it for this video. So that's how that's how you can you know work on the back end. The next video will be the database. And I think that's the most powerful use case for ChatGPT. All right, until then.